What's going on everybody, Dev here. And today we'll be looking at the GC Loader Optical Drive Emulator for the GameCube, created by Dan Coons, also known as Citrus 3000 PSI. This version of the GC Loader has been updated to be a plug and play solution, as opposed to the previous version which needed to be soldered. So all you'll need to get this up and running is, of course a GameCube, the GC Loader module, an SD card, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a game bit screwdriver to get the proprietary Nintendo screws out of there. And I'll leave a link below for a set of those. So let's get this started. So we're going to start off at the bottom of the GameCube, and this is the section that you'll need the game bit for. So you're going to get four screws out of the bottom here. One, two, three, four. Just the corners, and that's it. So once you're good with that, flip the GameCube back over and you can just kind of grab by the sides and take the top of it off. Put that aside for now. So what you'll want to start with are the front and the back panels. So the best way in my opinion of getting these off is start with the back panel because the front panel needs a little extra. So best way I found with these is to just, you can kind of just pull them back a little bit and then lift up gently. Don't, you know, just don't rip it out, you know, it'd be good. And then, so for the front panel, what you need to do is actually kind of do the same thing. Kind of just pick it back here, a little, a little crunch and then bring it up. Uh, what you want to be aware of though, is this ribbon cable right here. You don't have to be like super careful with it, but just, you know, just make sure you don't, you know, yank it out. But once you have the ribbon cable, once you get in there, you kind of just pull on it a little bit, kind of just like to rock it left and right. And it gets out of there easy enough. So we'll put those aside. The next part that we want to get rid of is going to be the fan. Um, here's a little, here's a power button right here. And then eight. Okay. So for the fan, the only cable you need to get rid of is this red and black cable. So you just kind of same thing, kind of just gently, kind of just rock it back and forth, pull it out, and you're good. And the next thing you're gonna have to hit are these two screws here. So we got one screw here and one screw here. So this one's a little easier because it's not just like jammed in there. Yeah, you can get it kind of, hopefully, get it out of there easy enough. Put that aside. This one, you know, if you have a bit smaller fingers, it's easy to kind of just yank it out. But uh, if you're smart, unlike me, not only will you have a magnetizer for your screwdriver, you won't lose the magnetizer. So, yeah. Oh, actually, oh, this one's a little magnetized. Hey, okay. I spoke too soon. All right, so get that one out of there. And you kind of just, yeah, you kind of just grab it. And so now you have the fan assembly. Let's put that back there. And so for the next part, we are going to get rid of several screws. So just, just keep an eye out, just make sure you, you know, you just have them in a, in a good spot. Maybe a ice cube tray, something like that. So the next three screws we're gonna grab are, are these ones that were underneath the fan assembly. So we got one, two, three. And then we'll flip this around. And it's gonna be five screws on this side. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna grab these four in the back here. So we've got one, two, three, four. And those screws are all the same size, so don't feel bad about mixing them up. Just get them in a safe spot. Uh, finally, we're gonna bring it back to the front here and we got four screws. We got one, two, three, four on the memory card assembly. All right, so I'm actually gonna pop off the DVD drive assembly and we'll flip it upside down because there are a few screws on the bottom that we need to get rid of. So it's gonna be these six screws on the bottom we got. Go one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Now those ones are a lot smaller, so just make sure you have a good place for them. But they're all pretty, all the screws are pretty discernible from each other, which is good, but they are different sizes, just keep them out of the way. Now you wanna take the shield off here. So you wanna take the, you know, take the GC loader module and the undercarriage, the shield that you got from the optical drive and you can take it, see the module, and just place it over that little hole. And then there's gonna be these three screw holes here. One, two, three. Just line those up like that. And what you wanna do is you're gonna grab the set of screws in the washer that came with the GC loader module. Yeah, you can flip this upside down like so. Line the screws up. It's a little, it's a little, definitely a little awkward. I'm not gonna lie, just because it's kind of just hanging down off of there. So grab these screws out, grab the washers. Be careful; these are these are small boys. Okay. And so these two screws are pretty close to where the module plugs in. So now the last screw outside of that, that's where you want to put the washer. So I can get this, grab the washer, put it over there as best as you can. And, whoop. See if we can get this first try, huh? It's a little tough. It's easier if you have nails, to be honest. That last screw on there. Alrighty. Undo. You're gonna take the metal shell. You got the GC loader, and we've got the rest of your GameCube here. So as you can see, we have pins right there, and it's just gonna go right into there. we go you hear a clip in and you know so what you're gonna do at this point you got your SD card just pop it in like this we'll have the uh, you know a little ridge on the side there and put it in there and voila you have just installed the GC loader plug-and-play ODE now, if you haven't already formatted and set up your SD card for use with this, I'm gonna go over that in the next segment. So now we're gonna set up the SD card for use with the GC loader. You can use an SD card anywhere from four gigabytes up to one terabyte. And the first thing we're gonna do is format the SD card to FAT32. So make sure you've got a blank SD card or you've got everything on your card backed up. For this process, I'll be using Rufus, but you can use whatever method you prefer. I'll have a link to the program in the description. So you're gonna select the card. The boot selection should be non-bootable. Partition scheme, MBR, file system, FAT32, and just keep the default cluster size. You can name whatever you want, but I'm just gonna stick with GameCube. So let's hit start. It's gonna let you know all the device data is gonna be destroyed. Hit okay. It's gonna go through motions a little bit. and you're good to go. Now that your SD card has been properly formatted, there are two items you'll want to download and put onto the card, Swiss and the GC Loader firmware. These will be linked in the description. As of right now, the firmware is on 1.0.1. .1. So we'll just download that right there. Save that. And we'll grab Swiss. So Swiss is going to be used for the management of your games to change some system settings and even utilize cheats. So once those are downloaded, we're gonna drag them onto the SD card. So the GC loader firmware can just be dragged right onto the SD card, just copied as is. For Swiss, you're just gonna have to unpack it. You're gonna go into the Swiss folder, go into this Swiss folder, ISO, and you're gonna grab the Swiss ISO for whatever region console you have. 
I have a US console, so I'm gonna grab the NTSCU ISO. So we'll drag that into there. And for Swiss, there's one more thing you need to do. Once it's on the SD card, you're gonna rename it boot.iso. Anything named boot.iso will tell the GC loader to boot this image first. Now you can technically do this with games, but to be honest, I'm not sure why you would want to, but I'm sure everyone's got their own use case. So now we'll bring our game ISOs onto the SD card, backups of course, and they can all live on the root folder. As for multi-disc games, as long as they sit in the same folder, you'll be able to utilize disc swapping as needed. And that's it. So now let's head over to the GameCube. When you boot up your GameCube, you'll be met with the Swiss menu. First things first, let's get the GC loader firmware updated. So head down here to the GC loader firmware that you dragged onto the SD card. Hit A, hit A again. And you'll be met with this screen saying the GC ODE firmware update. Press A again. And there we go. So the firmware has now been updated. So at this point, you're going to turn off the GameCube and power it back on. But make sure you don't hit reset. Actually, just power the whole thing off. And that's it. So that's how you update the GC Loader firmware. So now we're back in the Swiss menu. If you press B, it'll bring you to the menu across the bottom of the screen. I'm not going to go through the entire settings menu here, but I will point you to my favorite option. And that's to force 480p video. Now this won't work in every game, but when it does, it'll give you a little quality boost. So if I head to the bottom here to save and exit, you'll see that the config failed to save. Unfortunately at this time, you can't save the Swiss settings to the SD card in the GC loader. In order to utilize that and cheat functionality, you'll need to load Swiss from a secondary SD card. That can be achieved by using a GameCube memory card to SD adapter or an SD to SB2 which utilizes a serial port on the bottom of your GameCube. I'll have links to a couple of those options below. So now that's out of the way, let's boot up a game. I'm gonna go down here, let's go to Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. It gives you a couple options. So if you were to have a secondary SD card, what you can do is you can actually set up the settings on a per game basis, which is nice. Also the cheat functionality, obviously no cheats right now. And we'll just hit A to boot it. And that's it. The GC Loader is a great option in my opinion, as it runs $90 plus shipping, and if you've got a failing drive or maybe you don't want to wear the laser out on it, this is definitely a great replacement for that. But that'll do it for this one. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions or just want to say what's up. If you liked the video, hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down twice. But anyway, this is Digital Dev signing off, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.